Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to go into chapter 8, uh, Respiratory Systems in Humans and Animals. And our subtopic for today is on 8.1, which is the types of respiratory systems. So I hope you are ready to take notes and let's begin. Okay, so now we have five pictures here. What you have to do is observe the pictures closely. Now, what differences can you observe from the picture? Of course, the respiratory system. Now, why are there differences between this respiratory system among these animals? Something to think about. Okay, some animals have different not some different animals have different uh, respiratory systems so some animals have lungs and some don't well they are all unique in their own way and as they have different tasks to fulfill in this whole world okay so let's look into the learning objectives first uh, before we go in further firstly uh, you must be able to identify the respiratory structures in insects, fish, amphibians, and humans. Okay, and then you must be able to describe the adaptation of the respiratory structures and their functions for gases exchange in animals and also humans. The adaptation. Okay, and lastly, you should be able to compare and contrast the respiratory structures in humans and animals. Okay, so various organisms have various structural adaptation to maximize the rate of gases exchange. Now what is gases exchange? Uh, gases exchange is the process of oxygen uptake from the environment and the carbon dioxide released to the environment by the living organism. Now, respiratory gases exchange takes place on the respiratory surface in the respiratory structure of a living organism through diffusion. So, this respiratory structure is a structure specialized to help living organisms breathe. Now, as you have learned in Chapter 2, unicellular organisms such as amoeba, they do not need specialized respiratory structures because they have a large total surface area to volume ratio for gases exchange through diffusion. Okay, so the ratio of the total surface area to volume, the TSAV over V, uh, depends on the size of the organism. So the larger the size of organism, the smaller the ratio for total surface area to volume. This means that for the large and complex organism, the volume of the body requires oxygen will increase more than its total surface area and they can't carry out diffusion through body surface only. And this explains why small and simple organisms have simple respiratory system structures whereas the bigger and more complex organisms have specialized organs for gases exchange. Okay, so um, let's look into the insect respiratory structure and its adaptation. So for here, we will just focus on the grasshopper. It's almost the same for all insects. Okay, now you know that the body of insects are protected by a hard exoskeleton made of chitin. So this exoskeleton is waterproof and impermeable to gases. So the breathing system of insect is known as the tracheal system. The tracheal system of insect consists of a complex network of tubes of trachea and tracheals that deliver oxygen containing air to every cell of the body. Okay, so there are small pores in the thorax and abdomen of the insect called spiracles. The spiracles allow the intake of air into the tracheal system. The trachea, which is made of chitin rings to prevent it from collapsing, so this trachea branches out to form finer tubes called the tracheole which connects to every cell of the body. So tracheole is said to be the respiratory surface. Why is it respiratory surface? First because it is large in number for the large surface area. 
Then it has a thin and moist wall which allow oxygen to diffuse in and carbon dioxide to diffuse out easily. Um, some insects has the air sacs filled with air in their trachea system to speed up the delivery of respiratory gases during active movement. Now, the pathway of oxygen uh, diffusion from the environment into the trachea system is from the spiracle to the trachea, then into the tracheal and till it reaches the body cells. Okay? So now, let's look into the fish respiratory structure and its adaptation. Now, fish are multicellular aquatic animals that breathe through their gills. Most fish have four gills that are protected by the operculum on each side of the pharynx. Now, the gills are made up of line or filament that is supported by the gill arc. The filaments are the one responsible for the gases exchange. So, the filaments are the respiratory structure. Now, the filaments have many thin and flat projections called the lamella, as you can see on the slide. Now, a large number of filaments and lamella gives a large total surface area for an efficient gases exchange. So, back to total surface area. The lamella membrane is also thin and it is supplied with many blood capillaries for easy absorption and transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So basically, the adaptation of the respiratory structure is the same. Thin wall uh, and numerous blood capillaries and a large total surface area. So now let's look into the frog respiratory structure and its adaptation. Now, amphibians such as frog have a respiratory structure adapted for gases exchange on land and in water. So on land, the frog uses their moist skin and lungs for gases exchange. But when in water, the frogs are less active and the gases exchange happens through their skin. So the respiratory structure of a frog is the skin and the lungs. Now, let's look at the skin first. The frog has thin and permeable skin, which helps in increasing the rate of diffusion of respiratory gases. The frog's skin uh, mucus glands releases mucus to ensure that the frog's skin is always moist to dissolve respiratory gases. It also contains numerous network of blood capillaries beneath the skin to transport the respi respiratory gases. Okay, uh, now let's look into the lungs. Frog's lungs are a pair of air sacs organ connected to its mouth through an opening called glottis that can be opened and closed. The surface of the lungs is folded to increase the total surface area for gases exchange. Okay, it has a thin lung membrane which eases the diffusion of the respiratory gases. The lungs is also moist to enable respiratory gases to dissolve. And the lungs also contain numerous network of blood capillaries to transport the respiratory gases. Okay, so now let's look into the human respiratory structure and its adaptation. Now, this is something you are familiar with. You have learned about the respiratory organs and the human respiratory system in Form 3. So, you know that human needs their lungs for respiration and the alveolus is the respiratory structure in humans. Now, alveolus or plural alveoli are sacs of air and the surface within the alveolus makes up the respiratory surface for exchange. Now, let's look into the adaptation of the alveolus. Um, alveolus has a large surface area. The high number of alveoli increases the diffusion rate of respiratory gases. It has a moist wall that enables oxygen to dissolve and diffuse into the blood capillaries. 
The large network of blood capillaries throughout the alveoli surface increases the efficiency of gases exchange and the transport of oxygen from the alveoli into the body cells. Lastly, the thin wall which is about one cell thick also increases the rate of diffusion of the respiratory gases. Okay, so uh, you got to remember the general characteristics of the respiratory structures. All respiratory structures have almost the similar characteristics. Okay, firstly, it must have a large surface area. Okay, and then it must be permeable to oxygen and carbon dioxide, the respiratory gases. And it has to be moist so that the gases can dissolve and diffuse easily. And it should have thin walls to minimize the distance of gases diffusion and also has a network of capillaries underneath it for the gas transportation. So all these characteristics are very important in this respiratory structure for it to function well. So here you can look at the similarities and differences of the respiratory structures in humans and in animals. You can find this table uh, table 8.1 in page 131 from your textbook. Go through that and uh, see if you understand the differences between the structures in humans and also in animals. Hmm, with that, we are done. So as usual, at the end of the subtopic, you have to do the formative practice. So today you are going to do formative practice 8.1. Okay, so the question is, firstly, state the adaptations of the human respiratory structure. Explain how the frog skin is adapted for efficient exchange of gases. Okay, state the characteristics of tracheals that help with the gases exchange in insects. And predict, okay, this one is prediction of what will happen to a fish if its gills are torn after being caught in a net. With that said, we are done for today's lesson. I hope you can answer all the questions, you understand the subtopic. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe my channel.